Welcome to episode 227 of the Grip Strip Podcast, the mirror driving edition of the Grip Strip Podcast. My name is Philip Matthew. I'm your host, and I'm with my co host, as always, the iRacing Indy 500 champion, computer genius, gentleman, and a scholar. His name is Joshua Fine. What's going on, man? You're doing great, Phil. Yeah, of course. Uh, mirror driving, I think that's something we all need to practice because, you know, the guys on Sunday that were up there trying to win the race whether it was nascar f1 you know they uh figured out or need to know how to mirror drive for sure so um yeah a lot of action on this past weekend here in racing so yeah ready to get into it yeah definitely a busy weekend uh the two main races were or racing series were nascar and formula one of course uh nascar cup series ran at nashville with joey logano getting the victory after five green-white checkers and running over 100 laps on a tank of gas at a one-and-a-half or a cookie-cutter racetrack, um, pulling a Scott Dixon and Smokey Eunuch in the process there with Paul Wolf because that just defies logic. But then we'll get in all that, how Joey Logano won that race, um, what he did uh, to hold off Chase Briscoe and Tyler Reddick and make Tyler Reddick into like TNA wrestling version of Kurt Angle looking like he was about to explode. Um, we'll talk about the racing itself uh, prior to and after the rain delay. Um then we'll uh, get into other players considering Logano's win definitely affects the cut line for the Cup Series playoffs. So we'll talk all about that. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek goes and gets the win in the Xfinity Series. Um, and uh, Christian Eckes led every lap in the Truck Series. So we'll also recap both of those races. Uh, Cup and Xfinity, of course, will be at Chicago, so a um, little more urgency there. Uh, in the Austrian Grand Prix, I already got to say my piece in part on on the grid talk um, regarding Fish Lips and his um, general inability to drive a race car around somebody else when he actually has to race. Um, but we'll talk about it more detail here uh, tonight with the fact that uh, Verstappen basically ran into Lando Norris and cost himself a chance to win the race and knocked uh, Lando Norris out of the race. Now, granted, Lando Norris's racecraft isn't very good either. Makes sense that they're friends. Um, that uh, he cost himself that opportunity when he had the faster car. So we'll go over all that, what happened there, um, some of the actions that went on after that in terms of, and even prior to in the race um, for some of the other drivers, some of the penalties that took place during the weekend that might have affected the overall result anyway. Um, we'll go over all of that as well. And the fact that George Russell actually won. Uh, because most people, including me, choose to forget that part of it. Um, since Lewis had it, could have probably had a chance to win the damn race. Um, in the roundup, busy roundup, F2 and F3 were in Austria last week. They'll be back, of course, at Silverstone this weekend. MotoGP, Moto2 were in, were in Assen and last week, and they'll be at the Soxen Ring this week. NHRA was at Norwalk, Ohio on a back-to-back, -back, and uh, we'll provide an update on the legend John Force um, after his massive accident uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Formula E was in Portland for their uh, doubleheader, and Robert Wickens, for the first time since his uh, accident at Pocono in an Indy car gets behind the wheel of a open wheel car uh, and takes laps at Portland uh, in a Formula E machine. 
So who knows what that might mean since prior to his IndyCar days, he was an international uh, series driver driving DTM. So who knows? Maybe Hyundai decides to get into the into the mix and that gives uh, Robbie Wickens a chance to get back on uh, out there in an open wheel car. Rally Poland uh, was an interesting one. Uh, unfortunate events took place uh, with the death of a spectator. Um, I was at the you know, at the rally in part uh, with uh, multi-time world champion Sebastian Ogier, and uh, so we'll get into the the rally there, and then the previews for the supercars of Townsville and Indy next at Mid Ohio, making uh, our preview and picks for the British Grand Prix. Um, and who will probably finish beyond fish lips since he lost the race and acts like he didn't do anything wrong. And um, our picks for Mid-Ohio, since it'll be the debut of the hybrids, and they'll be using those for the rest of this year and, of course, into the future. So what do we expect from that? How that could change the um, overall racing product at Mid-Ohio, which, I mean... For the Indy cars is probably right on the line in terms of being able to make passing maneuvers. Um, now you're adding that extra horsepower piece, so um, how that will go and affect the racing and maybe m make more passing zones, or maybe there'll be less passing zones. Who knows? We'll make our picks for that. And then the uh, Chicago street course for the second time for Xfinity and Cup. The Xfinity race basically did not take place um, last year because of the torrential rains. Um, Cole Custer, the defending winner. Uh, one person that's been added to the field is Joey Logano. Uh, we'll tell you where he's racing or for who he's racing for and um, what might be coming along with that. Uh, the Cup Series, uh, Shane Van Gisbergen, if you didn't know who he was in motorsports, uh, became famous uh, last year during the cup race, uh, beating Justin Haley uh, for the win on debut and uh, trying to repeat as a winner in the cup series while trying to do the double uh, because he's going to try to win the Xfinity race and get his third consecutive road course win in the Xfinity series, and then go out and try to win the Cup Series race on Sunday. Uh, Josh will let us know all things going on in the world of iRacing and gaming in his sim segment, and then call it a day. So yeah, let's start with the Ally 400, Josh, at uh, Nashville Super Speedway, the place that will also hold the IndyCar Series finale uh, in a couple months' time. It was definitely an interesting day, um, a race where, at least early on, um, it was really uh, Christopher Bell's race. He started up front, won both stages, led the most laps. Uh, it was, um, I mean, he he was, yeah, he led until lap up through lap 217 there yeah before um soon after that was when uh, his unfortunate end came but um bell was trying to go and get another win give himself more um playoff points of course he got a couple of playoff points to salvage the day uh, and the uh, stage points otherwise he would have been uh, holding a bag uh, of crap, but for for Bell, he became one of many uh, drivers that were involved in accidents, especially basically for the last hundred laps of the race, since it went all the way to lap three thirty one. Um, it basically became a demo derby at uh, at Nashville. Uh, 
relatively tame and uneventful and pretty boring up to that point. But the last 100 laps basically became a short track race. Um, in the end, Joey Logano ran over 100 laps, I think 110 laps on a tank of fuel on a cookie cutter racetrack. Uh, which is unheard of. Um, granted, there were a lot of caution laps, but there were guys that pitted after him that ran out. Basically, everybody else that had pitted around him ran out. Um, there were people that decided to pit because they are like, there's no way we're going to make it. And because of all the yellows and all the nonsense, somehow or another made a finish out of it. Um go through the results here before I throw to you, Josh, because I mean, granted, Joey Logano has been close a couple of times this year, I think, to, I mean, early in the year, he really had a lot of pace and just didn't have the finishes to show for it. I mean, he had the best car at the Daytona 500, should have won that race. And um, I mean, there were other places that he probably had the pace and then they fell off a bit. And he had to make up that huge points deficit, but he's been doing that regularly, basically, for I don't know how many months. The win at North Wilkesboro, where they dominated the race, of course, doesn't really correlate to much um, during the regular season, but he he was desperate for that victory. Joey Logano going and getting that win, his 33rd career victory, Um He's won. I he's won at Nashville before in Xfinity, so gets another guitar. A uh, whole family was there, uh, so it was a good, uh, nice family celebration there. Joey Logano gets the win over Zane Smith, who gets his career best finish in the Cup Series. Comes from absolutely nowhere and finishes second. Um, Tyler Reddick, who was racing Joey Logano at the end of the race with fresher tires and fuel, um, left wondering and left seething. Ryan Priest with one of his best finishes of his cup career in fourth. And Chris Busher finishing fifth. Uh, Fords uh, did really well in the top ten at the end of this thing. You had five Fords or... Four Fords in the top six, and five Fords in the top ten. Blaney, Bubba, Larson, who was in a wreck. Daniel Hemrick, who basically started tailback. And then Noah Gagson, running out the top ten. Um, I thought about taking A.J. Allmendinger for this race because of my in my pick'em pool, but I was saving him for this weekend. Um, we'll see if that's who I pick later on on our show, but um, AJ Allmendinger gets the 11th place finish, uh, so Colleg gets a uh, 9th and 11th place, probably one of their best team results all season. 24 cars were on the lead lap at the end of the day. Um, you know, there, Justin Haley ended up finishing 13th just behind Danny Hamlin, who had to pit. He was leading and had multiple restarts at the lead. So, I mean, look at some of those. Sindrick spun out um, at the end of regulation, or else Denny Amlin probably wins that race. Uh, so much went on there. Um, I mean, Haley also had to do the whole penalty bit because he had a uh, penalty in pre-race inspection, and he somehow or another finished 13th. Uh, so, I mean, they they have a lot of pace, and I, they're the finishes in certain ways have not shown how fast they have been, uh, which in, I can't believe I'm saying that Rick Ware Racing actually is competitive, uh, but they are, uh, especially with the way Justin Haley has been driving this year. They seem to be putting a lot of things together there to actually be relevant. Um, never thought the day would come. Uh, for Spire Motorsports, LaJoy was up there late, but then, you know, did Corey LaJoy things. Uh, Carson Hosevar uh, caused at least one incident because he's Carson Hosevar, but he was running up there. 
Um, trying to get through some of these other guys. Yeah, Byron. Byron basically is non-existent. Chase Elliott spun out two times on his own. Um, and then uh, Chase Briscoe, I mentioned, was nowhere to start the race and ended up uh, being in a position to possibly win it on one of the final restarts. Gets run up into the gray by Logano and um, proceeds soon after to run out of gas. Um and finished 21st, losing a bunch of points to the cut line. Uh, you had Suarez, Keebler, Gibbs, and Truex rounding out the lead lap cars there. So, I mean, I mentioned Bell. Chastain was leading the race. Uh, Chastain was in a position to win that. And then because Kyle Larson wanted a rage wreck, Denny Hamlin, uh, he hits the apron and takes... Uh, Ross Chastain out. Um, there were multiple incidents that, uh, or that incident also basically took out Kyle Busch or put Kyle Busch in a position to end up wrecking later on, uh, which was also caused by Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin situation. Um, Josh Berry ends up getting wrecked in one of the final restarts after having a pretty good day in his home race. So, I mean, a lot went on in this deal, Josh. And, um, but once you break it, break it down to simple terms, Joey Logano wins this race and gives himself a, a cushion. All three Penske cars are now in the playoffs. Uh, four Fords are in the playoffs as winners. And um, the the Ford, I guess the whole Ford resurgence thing continues, though I would venture to say that it was not a Ford race until late. Yeah, it wasn't really a Ford race until the very end there. Um, I mean, Danny Hamlin was probably going to win this race. And then... Uh, Austin Sindrick, I guess, and uh, Noah Gregson got into it on the, you know, backstretch last, you know, two laps, and all hell broke loose there because, you know, like you said, Kyle Larson has an axe to grind officially with uh, Denny Hamlin, who I guess now on if you listened to his show earlier is now classifying this. They got him to classify this as a rivalry, so um, at least that's what Denny's camp is saying. We'll see what Larson how he actually responds to this, but. Um, um, you know, it seems like Denny has been more the aggressor there many times, but, um, yeah, the, uh, restart there, of course, yeah, Chastain got cleaned out there and that, you know, put Kyle Busch in the wall and then Kyle Busch got screwed again, you know, later on Kyle Larson running gas, running out of gas there. Um, you had guys running over each other on the restart, you know, and somehow or another Joey Logano stretched his gas tank far uh, more than the rest of the field to go out uh, and win that race. And, I mean, it does. it is interesting because uh, I think, yeah, Denny Hamlin, when I think they all pitted on the same uh, pit cycle there, but uh, Joey Logano was in 14th, I think, at the end of, or like right at that caution on lap 299. And so he was nowhere near up front. So maybe he was able to kind of conserve fuel there uh, at the end, running, you know, not running. Well, can't say he wasn't running as hard, but certainly not racing for the lead like Denny Hamlin was going up to um, race with uh, Ross Chastain to take the lead with five laps to go there. So um, obviously, Logano there had fuel in the tank, and then throughout all those cautions, was able to somehow conserve fuel. And you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm pretty sure their team probably has figured out a way to you know, get as, you know, much fuel in there as possible and, you know, get away to figure out how to, you know, continue to save all that fuel. So, you know, obviously it was just enough because he ran out right after the line and, you know, ran out completely when he did a half burn out there uh, on the front stretch. So, um, yeah, this, I mean, it's a shakeup for sure in the standings because, you know, going into this, he was outside of the picture uh, in the playoff grid, but, I feel like we would have never really considered, you know, Joey Logano to be a true, uh, I guess, bracket buster here in this because, you know, they've, I mean, 
I think they've just had poor luck this year. It's not like, you know, they've, I mean, they did have a stretch where they were running terribly, but, uh, you know, it's not out of the stretch to think that, um, you know, he's truly a non-contender. If Zane Smith had won, you know, this would be a, a true bracket buster for sure uh, there. But obviously Logano far back enough uh, in terms of the playoff standings that uh, now this gets him in there and puts other guys in, into question. Obviously Bubba Wallace now 50 points back uh, in the playoff standings now uh, after uh, this. So uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be interesting how you know how this plays out um with the playoff grid and all that but uh look yeah logano comes out of here with with the win so now all three penske drivers is now one within the last you know within the last month now with uh Cindric over at gateway you know ryan blaney two weeks ago at iowa and now uh, uh joey logano there so um yeah all the three of those guys in the playoff picture now so um now Penske can, I guess, figure out a way to, I guess, be competitive in the playoffs like they were last year. So, um, yeah, the, I mean, this race, yeah, especially the, all those restarts, definitely wild. Uh, kind of reminds me because there was five overtime restarts there. Uh, the Truck Series, when they had the green-white checkered rule, uh, I believe it was Gateway in 2004, where they had, like, four restarts of green-white checkered and extend the race by, like, uh, I think it was like four. I was reading about this on Wikipedia. Was, I think it's 14 laps or so. So not as quite as bad as this, you know, extra 30 laps. But you know, I think it was at least like four extra restarts that they had uh, back then, and that was part of the reason why they went and limited it to only one green white checkered uh, restart when they first implemented green white checkered. And then you know over time they've modified it to now where it's essentially unlimited again. And you know we sometimes get this. I know in Xfinity and in truck, you know, especially at uh, super speedways, uh, there've been uh, a ton of cautions, um, and pretty sure at least you know one of those super speedway races, they probably had just as many uh, overtime restarts like we did here, and this is the most ever uh, in Cup history. So um, it does. I feel like you know. I mean, I know the reasons why they happen. You know, guys running out of gas, Kyle Larson. Uh, you know, other guys getting run over with one of those cautions, um, obviously overdriving into the corners. So um, it does make it look like amateur hour and, you know, it does make you kind of wish for the old days when they didn't have these things uh, and it was just run to the advertised distance. So, or the scheduled distance. So, you know, kind of, kind of do wish that they went back to it. You know, I feel like it's just better if the knit race just, ends where it naturally supposed to conclude but you know i'm not the one running nascar so and i mean it, it is entertaining we'll give them that but you know at the cost of what so uh you know the integrity probably so there is something to question there uh but yeah that was uh definitely a wild race especially yeah after the rain for some reason rain makes racing interesting whether it's before or after uh, definitely changes the track or changes how they strategize how they race and all that stuff so yeah there's definitely an effect there uh but yeah one of the guys that yeah, you mentioned there in the results there i mean you talked about justin haley um i really think it's just his talent he's just figured out a way to make uh the wicker cars competitive um and they've been a dark horse there uh in several races this year so you know definitely i think they're continuing to raise their profile as a team justin haley i think whenever he finally gets signed by a, a bigger team um definitely you know he's going to be up there uh for uh you know one of those ford teams potentially or maybe even chevy team as a pro you know high profile uh free agent whenever that happens um of course and on contrast his old ride the 31 you know has never been competitive well daniel hamrick finished in the top 10 this week so surprisingly but Daniel Hemrick has never really flashed at all, you know, this season. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of the contrast there. And maybe Justin Haley wouldn't have been as noticeable had uh, he stayed at College Racing there. So, um, yeah, definitely, you know, there's a lot, you know, in terms of the results, guys finishing where they shouldn't have. I mean, Chase Briscoe, like I said, ran out of gas there and probably had a potential win on the line. 
Uh, Zane Smith, of course, finished second there. Uh, could have won. Ryan Priest had a shot, like you said. Bubba Wallace up to third there in, in the final stages, fell back to sixth, and then you know fell out of the top ten completely because they had to pit for gas, and then somehow him and Ryan Blaney, both of them, were able to make it back into the top ten uh, there. So, yeah, definitely, yeah, a lot happened, and you know, a lot of people trying to figure out what happened in this race, but um, yeah, it was definitely one of the more wilder races that we've seen in quite a while. Yeah, I mean, it's still hard to kind of explain. I mean, the whole Logano thing in itself is a story, and they're probably going to be spending plenty of time talking about it uh, this coming weekend or leading up to it on the radio and everywhere. Um, I mean, you got Hamlin, who's aggrieved and probably because of all the dang restarts. Um, the whole Larson thing, I mean, whatever. I, those two, if they're going to run over each other, is fine. But when you're wrecking other people's stuff in the process, it's pretty weak. Um, Chastain probably is hard done because he got himself in a position to win that, and he's a former winner there. The whole track house connection with Nashville and all that. Um wanted to get that win and he was defending really hard and it and it was a good race with him and Hamlin uh took him a while for Hamlin to finally get him and he did but uh we don't know what would have happened there um yeah so much went on there it's crazy but you brought up Bubba and uh his point situation he's now yeah 50 150 whatever 51 points behind Alex Bowman who's on the cutoff now um and that's and right now Alex Bowman's 13th in points um 5 points behind Chris Busher and 15 behind Chastain 19 behind Keebler Gibbs so essentially those four guys are all clustered really close together and but what also happened is that cutoff line has become basically no man's land if you're if somebody else outside of the 16 wins you're you're it becomes really tough if you're already outside of the top 16 you basically have to win uh to make the playoffs now uh, because you're getting to nearly a race gap uh, between 16th and 17th. Uh, for Bubba, he's probably <clears throat> feeling a bunch of different things, knowing that you have a couple of road races coming up, or at least one road race coming up. You have, for Briscoe, um, you know, they're... They haven't been consistent enough at times to really be anywhere. Kyle Busch's season is one of the worst seasons of his career. But then, can you really be shocked by it? What has he done since he, he won a gateway last year? So, I mean, the fact he's 19th in points is, with all the bad stuff that's happened, is probably credit to Kyle Busch since he probably wants to lose his mind on somebody. Um, Todd Gilland right now is actually, um, the fourth driver, or they, they kept Josh Berry out there, so no, it's, uh, it's, uh, Bubba, Briscoe, Kyle Busch, Josh Berry, and then Todd Gilland. So, yeah, I mean, now that we got to this point, I mean, it's going to be very hard, uh, Trying to win races, it's already hard enough as it is, but you add the the combination of races that they have coming up. I mean, you have three weeks, three consecutive races here that are five in a row. This or not five in a row, um, way more than that. They start the season, they've started the season racing every week. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're racing 22 consecutive. They're getting on the last three weeks of that before the olympic break the chicago 
Street Course, Pocono, and the return of the Brickyard 400. So that's going to be interesting. And then your final four races are Richmond, Michigan, Daytona for the Coke Zero 400, and then the Southern 500 at Darlington, which we remember how the last Darlington race ended. Um, so, and you add an extra 100 miles to it. So, I mean, this is the last road course race before the the playoffs coming up, but you have these unique racetracks, a bunch of big racetracks, three of them, uh, coming up, and then you have Daytona as a wild card. Um, I would venture to say that there's three wild cards left because of Chicago, Indy, and Daytona. So, um, if you're outside of the playoffs, uh, time is getting short um, in terms of your options. Uh, and what they're going to focus on, uh, where they're going to focus their energies to try to possibly get a win. Uh, fuel mileage is is definitely going to be in play at a few of those racetracks. I mentioned Pocono and Indy, and and oh, those two are in Michigan are all notorious for fuel mileage. So could be interesting that way. Uh, one race that definitely wasn't as interesting was the Tennessee Lottery 250 um, with uh, John Hunter Nemechek getting the win. He won stage two, led 76 laps. Basically, it was three drivers that did all the... They, only three drivers led the race. Uh, you had Keebler Gibbs who started on pole, and then uh, what was it he got? I think he got wrecked, right? Yeah, so um, they're not showing the yeah, stage one, stage two. Yeah, he got into a wreck with uh, Justin Allgaier and, and uh, Chandler Smith, who recovered, actually, to finish second. Uh, Jesse Love started tailback and actually finished third. Um, Hank Kill... Um, finished fourth. Noah Gagson uh, finished fifth for Rhett Jones. So they've had two top ten finishes in their two Xfinity starts. Um, Herb sixth. AJ Allmendinger seventh. Definitely was running up front earlier in the race. Um, lost it late there. Allgaier eighth. Cole Custer who led 64 laps was ninth. And uh, Sam Mayer Rounding out the top 10. Carson Quapple uh, finished 12th. Sieg started third. Ryan Sieg had finished 11th. Uh, Brockshot Jones there. Tyler Reddick driving for Sam Hunt. Didn't really have uh, the pace. SVG gets a top 15 finish, so credit to him there. Um, there was, yeah, 23 cars on the lead lap. And everybody was running, too. Everybody was running at the end of the race. So um, there is that. Uh, but John Hunter goes and gets the win, Josh. I mean, it's not that surprising. It's, he's already won earlier this year in the Xfinity car. Uh, Gibbs has done pretty well with uh, the different drivers they've been putting into the 19 and 20 car. We found out that Eric Almirola and... Darrell Walls Jr. got into an altercation at one of the Toyota meetings. And I would love to know more details about that. Um, they suspended Eric Almirola indefinitely. So I guess he got, he thinks he got him, but um, Bubba Walls is the one that still has a job. But that's beside the point. Um, John Hunter Nemechek, another one is a, who's one of those. Um, Ilk uh, goes and gets the victory uh, there on Saturday. And, um, yeah, it was a Gibbs 1-2. And probably there was going to be a Gibbs car winning the race, but it wasn't the Gibbs car that we probably expected in theory. 
Yeah, I mean, I think we expected uh, Ty Gibbs to win that race, but, uh, you know, Ty, I mean, he was the only caution there uh, in that race uh, with getting spun out by uh, Justin Allgaier, uh, but maybe it looked like Justin Allgaier got on his uh, right left rear quarter panel and got him loose there and maybe didn't touch him one of those uh, phantom spins, you know, with uh, how the air moves around in the Xfinity cars. That's definitely possible there, uh, how that came about. But yeah, Ty Gibbs led a ton of laps early on, uh, but John Hunter and Jack, you know, able to drive away and uh, kind of in clean air. So uh, yeah, it's another another win this year for John Hunter in the Xfinity series, even though now he's a, a cup regular and second win of the year. So um and for you know the 20 car which is the all-star car along with the 19 yeah it's a another win for their all-star car there so yeah there's not really you know too much to really take away from this race uh um i thought you know aj allmendinger had a shot in this race because they were talking about him a lot on the broadcast and um at one point it looked like he was going to be a contender he was up there in the top five uh but i guess he lost track position or the handle and fell back to uh seventh there you know, he had the bad first pit stop bad pit stop okay so yeah that's what it was yeah because he had a bad pit stop and uh i think they looked like he was a little bit upset there on based on his body language uh in the in car there but yeah so bad pit stop there and they had the most stage points uh that you know of all the eligible drivers uh there uh finishing second in both stages so that one seemed like a bit of missed opportunity there uh for Almendinger. so um you know of course he still gets good points and they had a good run uh overall in the day but they just didn't get the finish that they were looking for there um and everything and uh riley herbs you know had issues with his cool suit throughout the race uh with it not working and not working properly and it's too hot for him but still salvaged a sixth place finish out of that so um uh, good for uh, those guys, they were struggling throughout the race as well um, there. So, yeah, this, yeah, on the contrast to the cup race, you know, definitely a, a race that was very uneventful uh, for sure. But, yeah, in the end, uh, Joe Gibbs' car won the race in Xfinity, which not surprising. So, um, yeah, this was definitely uh, a lot less interesting than cup. But, you know, I did like some of the strategy that was going on, especially, you know, up front with uh, some of those guys, you know, especially with Almendinger. I was looking forward to seeing how he would turn out in the third stage. But, you know, that bad pit stop there did definitely set him back. Yeah, and I mean, that's unfortunate. It's been a year now since AJ Almendinger's won a race. So, uh, colleague raising has fallen back. In general, yes, SVG is there, and he's won a couple of races, but um, their overall pace on ovals has not been great. So the fact that Almendinger was up there early in the race and for a good amount, yeah, a good amount of the day, um, and then one of their major issues that they've had uh, this whole season has been with pit stops and the way this field is with all these teams, you can't be giving up that many places on pit road and expect to get all that back. Um, they don't have the cars to make up that kind of, make up that kind of deficit. So, uh, something we have to keep looking at because AJ's going to make the playoffs more than likely points wise. He's pretty solid. Um, I have a hard time believing um, that there will be an additional, what, four more winners? or th Yeah, four more winners um, outside of the cut line. Um, so, uh, right now, Cole Custer, points leader by 15 overall on Chandler Smith and 48 over Allgaier, 78 over Hill. Um, those are the four that would be in the the mix for that regular season title. Uh, but as these weeks go on, it's becoming 
more like a two driver race between Custer and Chandler Smith for those 15 playoff points. Uh, Herbst is in fifth. Jesse Love is only 10 points behind him. Uh, AJ Almanier, seven. Sheldon Creed in eighth. You got uh, 26 points separating fifth through eighth. Then you have Kligerman. Uh, and Sammy Smith rounding out the the uh, the drivers in Kligerman plus forty six, and then um, Sammy Smith plus eleven over Ryan Sieg. So that's intriguing, especially going to a street course. Sieg isn't known for his road racing prowess. Sammy Smith has various experience, um, hasn't really done much. Uh, since he won a Phoenix last year. So it's been a long time that he's really done much of anything. I think he had a couple of two, three good finishes since then. But um, at what point is he going to show up? You know, like Brookshot Jones is another one. Uh, the seven car has been fast every week. The one car seems to figure out a way to win. But then the other two cars are just out there. Uh you would think that June, and then when the 88 car, it seems to run fast whenever they're out there, whether it's with Carson Wapple or insert driver, Junebug will be in it here next month. So, I mean, it's interesting with those cars. But, um, yeah, Brockshot Jones is minus 54, Anthony Alfredo minus 59, so... We're, those guys, it's starting to get to a point where they're going to need to win uh, to get into the playoff. Uh, the drivers that are currently in, I would say, probably are just trying to maintain. Uh, the truck series at uh, Nashville was um, Christian Eckes. Uh, earned additional $50,000 for the... Triple Truck Challenge, um, third win of the season, eighth of his career, and um, yeah, Stewball actually qualified on pole but never led a lap, so that's good for the world. Um, Christian Eckes is your, your winner. I mentioned all led all the laps. Daniel Dye gets a career best finish in second. So teammates there, one and two. Um, Corey Heim finished third. Raja Karuth gets a fourth. Um, and then Tyler Ankrum was fifth. So three McAnally trucks in the top five. I uh, Grand Infinger, if you add him into there, he was also a he's a Mac. I think he's a McAnally, um affiliated truck there. Ben Rhodes, a defending champion. Matt Mills from Tailback actually finished eighth. No, I mean they should be because that was a truck that won last year. Uh, Ty Majeski ninth, and then Jake Garcia tenth. Stu Ball mentioned B finished eleventh. Um, Lane Riggs was running up there earlier in the day, uh, finished second in stage one, but then had an issue with Stefan Parsons running each other over and uh, ends up 25th. Matt Crafton had stage points, but he, in one of the stage, finished 23rd. And then Clint Boyer, who was actually racing for Spire in the seven truck, finished, uh, 17th and vowed that he would be back because he doesn't want to end like that. We'll see how that actually works out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think the bigger storyline, yeah, Ekis went and dominated and what led every lap, but this, this is really turning into a two horse race for this championship. Uh, not just because they're winning all the races, but it really they're a cut above. Eckes and Heim are a cut above everybody else in this series. Eckes isn't getting any talk for a promotion anywhere, whether it's to Xfinity or Cup. Corey Heim, of course, whether it's 
going to 2311. He drove for them this past weekend. Whether it's going to to Legacy, which I wouldn't wish on anybody, considering how bad Legacy is. Um, they make Petty Enterprises seem like they were good. Um, but, you know, Corey Heim seems to have options wherever he wants to go. Uh, they're treating him with kid gloves like uh, they did with Christopher Bell. Um, but, yeah, I mean, th this, this truck series, there aren't that many races left in their regular season, but I have a hard time going past uh, Corey Heim or, or Christian Eckes at this point, Josh. I mean, really, who's... I mean, I guess we could say Nick Sanchez, we could say Raja for Spire, but they're not there every week. The 19 and the um, 11 and the 19 are there every week, and and they always have pace. So, um, I don't know, what are you thinking um, after, a, after a woodshed whipping by uh, Christian Eckes at Nashville? Yeah, well, first of all, for Christian Eckes, I mean, that was a uh first flag to flag victory since like 2012 in the truck series so it's been quite a long time and you know considering how the truck series racing is at times uh you know especially with seven cautions that we had here um definitely uh quite a feat to pull off here uh so obviously his truck was handling well but yeah you mentioned the the pipeline i mean for uh cory heim obviously toyota had he's in the driver development pipeline for Toyota and it looks like there is a path for him to get to the Cup Series and we saw that you know obviously he's already um started racing the Cup Series and um doing you know whether he's you know doing fill-in duty for Eric Jones uh there in, in the Cup Series or um doing uh stuff for 2311 definitely uh there's a path for him where we can see him legitimately race in the cup series possibly next year or even the year after so there's a pipeline for him but not for christian eckes we haven't heard anything like you said so um yeah i'd be curious like where he goes from here if, if um he you know possibly goes to a chevy team in the xfinity series you know could he you know go to college racing or um some other xfinity team where he's maybe he's not tied to a manufacturer and we see him uh run in in the xfinity series uh with possibly you know a toyota team he i mean they did used to drive for toyota with mcnally racing and um everything or possibly ford so there's you know a opportunity there for him so i guess as he continues to quietly battle well maybe not so quietly but you know in terms of upward mobility quietly hang around around uh Corey Heim maybe can make a case for himself to uh continue and you know ha have a, a path into the Xfinity series and eventually you know maybe into the Cup series so even Raja has a a path forward because I think there's probably an angle to get him into you know Spire Car and Cup at some point or you know potentially even a, a Hendrick car if you know something with one of their drivers where they don't get locked up long term so um there's definitely a path for him but yeah i guess not so much so yeah this victory especially the fact that he led the entire race definitely good for him uh, and definitely gives him a, a case to you know battle with Corey heim for this regular season championship which and we only have three races left to go which i was shocked by that uh, i was like really which you know tells you how little that they have with the truck series and you know, i guess this format makes it seem like the regular season air quotes there uh you know is not as uh intense as what it, it you know seems like it they make it to be so yeah it's uh jocking that you know they only have three races left and you know then they'll start their playoff uh in the middle of the summer whereas cup and xfinity won't start until you know the end of the summer at least there so uh, into the fall so yeah that's a pretty interesting race there i mean um i think the only real incident of note that we can probably talk about is the deal with lane rakes and stefan parsons there and you know i think 
those two guys were running pretty good, and then uh, I guess Lane Riggs didn't like how he was being raced by Stephen Parsons and spun him out there in the middle of turn three and four. So obviously NASCAR penalized him there two laps for uh, rough driving and then, you know, ended up not getting good finish. So, yeah, I guess it's another deal for Lane Riggs. You know, he's had some good runs here uh, or has had some, you know, opportunities to finish well and I think a lot of things have happened to him, you know, especially at the beginning of the year and then, had a stretch where he, I think he was getting some good finishes, and now last couple of races uh, not as good. So uh, he's probably one of those guys on the list that you know, he's got to figure it out here and get it turned around. But yeah, this uh, other than that, you know, I mean, it's hard to really talk much about a race where the one guy just you know led the whole race in the truck series, mind you, uh, flag to flag. Yeah, I mean, I the I think the angle other than this head-to-head battle uh, between these uh, Heim and and Eckes, and then also the subplot himself or whatever with Eckes not really being in the mix, uh, but drivers around him all seemingly having options. Uh, I wonder how many options there really are when. You have guys like Connor Zilich that are out there and uh, and the like who already has a contract with a cup team. Uh, Corey Heim basically co- has contracts with cup teams, uh, or at least two of them. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that's interesting. I mean, Eckes uh, hasn't generally been... He's one of the drivers. He's got... Uh, more of that background of not bringing a whole lot of money to the table. So the fact is that's where he's lost out on rides. I mean, he, he was funded at Kyle Busch Motorsports and it was somewhat of a struggle for him. Then he went to Thor Sport, was able to win there. Then now he's at McAnally and he found, he found his stride there. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, he leads the regular season points at the moment um, over Corey Heim. And then um, you have only four winners of the truck regulars. Uh, Ty Majeski at plus 144, I would basically say, is in. Uh, then there's a pretty tight... Uh, group there, 14 points separating Tyler Ankrum, Taylor Gray, Ben Rhodes, and Grant Infinger. Um, and then Tanner Gray's plus 14 over Daniel Dye, who got his career best finish. And then Stuart Friesen's a further three points back. So that's the battle right now with three to go. Points uh, are three drivers for one spot. After that, Crafton uh, is anybody. I think from Matt Crafton on, you need to win a race. Uh, that lead that includes the likes of uh, of Crafton, the multi-time champion Purdy, Jake Garcia, Lane Riggs, um, on and on and on there. Um, but I mean, I don't know how many of them drivers are really. A legitimate contender to win a race, so curious to see how that all works out. Um, next race they'll have is Pocono. Uh, the we switched from a race where there basically was no action, and uh, we go to a race where there was more than enough action. And uh, it involved uh, Fish Lips, the uh, soon to be uh, later this year four time world champion consecutive, um, was leading the race, led from pole um, over his uh, buddy Lando Norris. And then Lando Norris caught for stop in in part because Red Bull had a bad pit stop. They weren't as pacey as they usually are. 
Um, in the process, that meant that Max Verstappen actually had to defend his position and actually race somebody on the racetrack. And then he basically showed us what he is. Um, so if you're a Lewis Hamilton fan, you don't need any reminders of all the bullshit he pulled in 2021. Um, but that's essentially what he did with Lando. Uh, granted, his buddy uh, in the McLaren, uh, some of his decisions that he made, dive bombing and trying to go for it only in turn three instead of using some of his options, uh, whether it's going outside on turn four, um, you know, trying to go and make something happen up that a long uphill climb after turn one. Uh, that's That was where he basically was like, that's my only option. Um, turn four is an option. Front straightaway going into turn one, he didn't really have any runs there. But in the grand scheme of things, he probably had the better race car and could have won the race if he had better race craft. Um, but obviously, um, he raced somebody who he says they say he says they're friends, and uh, the friend didn't reciprocate the respect there. Um, but then it's Max Verstappen. He's he's enabled by his own team uh, because they tell him he doesn't ever do any wrong. He's been told for God knows how long that he's some sort of golden child. And um, like Michael Schumacher, there's a level um, of delusion that goes with being as good as they are. Um, basically thinking their shit don't stink. But Verstappen hasn't had sheet time. And um, he hasn't had to really... Um, be put under real pri like under real duress. Um, anytime he has to race somebody, he goes and moves his car around, uh, makes more moves than Floyd Mayweather, and then um, goes and runs into him, and then sits there and blames them. And then you have GP getting on the radio and saying he wasn't at fault. You have all the idiots that run Red Bull Racing defending him he sits there and never has an ounce of remorse and it's like at some point somebody has to just crash into the guy at high speed and and let's see how well he handles that um i would i would gladly say to for lewis considering mercedes is not exactly giving him great stuff though they seemingly are doing a little better i'd be like yeah lewis just go full throttle through him that that would be a, it would actually be a win because it would be better for the race immediately. Um, or or it already or, happened or though three years ago. <laughs> well, that that's there's that's a whole other thing because there is actually a a battle there, um, and a lot of it was driven by Max's inability to go wheel to wheel, which three years later, um, sixty something wins and poles and all this other stuff and his great prowess and on, on the sim, he can't drive around anybody. And to me, that's, that's pathetic. You're a three time going to be five time world champion. After all of this is said and done and you can't race side by side with anybody. Um, like, what is what is your problem? Um, and any using his car as a weapon uh, is also a off-putting and disturbing trend. Um, but you know, like he needs to. It, there's people that have had to have some major accidents to have a wake-up call, and homeboy hasn't wrecked um, or had something happen that. And it's, I'm not like, let's get this straight. I'm not going to be quoted and says, misquoted and saying, I want him to crash. Though when he does crash, it makes, I do get a chuckle out of it. Um, largely because it's karma. 
um, for how pathetic of a person he is. But the reality of the world is the dude needs a wake up call. And whether it's somebody punching him in the face, whether it's somebody running into him, him hitting a fence hard, whatever it has to be, somebody has to do something or he has to do something because in the in the end, he's not he's he thinks he's God. I mean, he has delusions of grandeur like a certain orange fellow. Like, dude, you're not that important. Like, you have the personality of Toast, and you have the you have the maturity of a child. You could drive a race car really well, but once you take that away, what the hell are you? Um. Yeah, I'm, I devolved into a thing of me ranting about Max Verstappen because I hate hate that motherfucker. He's a piece of shit person. His team is one of the most pathetic teams in the history of mankind in motorsports with Karen Horner and One-Eyed Marco, which I slipped and called him One-Eyed Marco on the grid talk. Um, but, um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's another... A gutless guy who has a goofy personality. George Russell benefited from his buddy Lando getting wrecked and uh, uh, fish lips running him over. Um, it's just like what happened at uh, the Brazilian Grand Prix a couple of years ago as well. So two for two in that instance. So maybe um, that's the key. If Max Verstappen actually has to battle someone, maybe George Russell will be that world champion that... Toto Wolf so desperately wants him to be. Uh, it was it was Russell over Oscar Piastri who got penalized on in qualifying, and if he wasn't penalized in qualifying, we may have been talking about him getting his first Grand Prix win. And then Carlos Sainz, who basically had the most anonymous third place finish that you'd you'd ever see. Um, even he was surprised he was in third place. I think uh, uh, so. I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, Josh. I mean, the really the real story going into Silverstone is the battle between Fish Lips and, and Norris. But there's, I mean, Russell, British driver, winning, going into the British Grand Prix. Um, huge for them, huge for Mercedes. Um, Lewis Hamilton being in position, possibly committing a uh, dr- putting a driver error, um, driving off pit road, and that penalty possibly playing a part in him not being in a position to win that race. So plenty that went on, but uh, Russell gets the win, but the real story is the guys that crashed in front of him. Yeah, I mean, Toto Wolf actually got emotional there, and he's like, come on, George. You can win this. You can win this. No, just let me fucking drive. And um, George Russell was out there and able to win. But uh, no, the drama between uh, Max Verstappen and Lando, I mean, this is probably the most dramatic that you know we've seen F1 in three years. So since uh, Lewis versus Max uh, a couple years ago. So you know, at least there's that. But um you know, Max, yeah, yeah, I don't think he's learned from before and yeah, whatever, but uh, he, I'll, you can also contrast this with what I guess a few years ago um, at the same corner in the Austrian Grand Prix, um, he was going for overtake, I think, on uh, Leclerc and Leclerc kind of made the same move, but Max also moved to the left to counter that and then was able to do kind of the over under there and get around him. Um, and I don't know if that's what Lando Norris did, but, uh, yeah, definitely what Max did was, you know, wrong, I think there and definitely, you know, should, should maybe face a bigger penalty than that. But, you know, then also then 10 seconds, but then also like, yeah, Lando Norris, like definitely seemed like a, you know, very, you know, desperate move there, you know, and also considering the fact that, uh, I mean, he did have the time penalty as well. So he had a five second time penalty there. So there was urgency to try to get to the lead and then build a gap as, you know, quickly as possible. But then, 
um, also, you know, he, he also had the tire advantage as well. And, you know, Max, of course, fading because the, I guess, you know, they had something clearly wrong and they were on, uh, you know, scuffed tires and Lando had, you know, better, fresher tires there, uh, after that last pit stop and he was able to close the gap, especially with the bad pit stop by Red Bull there. But, um, yeah, Lando, like you said, yeah, I think he obviously needs to have better racecraft. You know, we've seen too many times though, you know, since he started in F1, especially, you know, the last year or so that he's gotten competitive, you know, especially this year, uh, has been, you know, lacking in racecraft at times. And, you know, this is definitely one of those times where he could have executed better racecraft. And that's not to excuse Max Verstappen from his own egregious error. But, you know, I think they also, this to say that I think, you know, they both hold some share of the fault. So we'll say it's probably at least, you know, 70 30, 60 40 on Max there. So, um, you know, I think it it's uh, kind of uh, you know a deal there that you know they have to both have to have better racecraft and uh, better ability to hold their line and whatnot. So um, yeah, of course, Lando Norris there you know ends up falling out of the race, uh, and Max you know even though Max had a flat tire, still able to continue and get to or you know I guess hold on to fifth there. So. Yeah, George Russell, you know, what a rare victory there for George Russell there in Mercedes. They actually went out and won a race here, which, you know, is obviously surprising. But, um, yeah, this, at least we are getting to a point where we can have a solid rivalry in F1 again because in the last two and a half years of domination by Max Verstappen, you know, it's getting old and everything, and now... Lando's actually being to challenge a McLaren. They're finally being able to challenge for wins and stuff like we've been talking about and you know, expect them to continue to uh, be up there. Of course, you know, their home Grand Prix coming up here, uh, you know, this week in the uh, British Grand Prix at Silverstone. So, you know, I'm, you know, obviously be looking for them to avenge this, uh, you know, battle with, uh, that they lost with Verstappen there. So, um, yeah, this was, you know, definitely a, a wild last couple of laps. I mean, the first, you know, 60 laps or so up until the final pit stop, yeah, it definitely was going to be another Red Bull clinic for uh, for Stappen there. But then after the final pit stop, it actually got interesting there. So, uh, yeah, this was, yeah, definitely a wild race, a uh, wild ending for sure. And, you know, now hopefully, hopefully, the, you know, they can race each other clean, but it is interesting the off track dynamic there because they are friends off the track and on the track now they're beginning to uh, run into each other a lot or have battles between each other and now obviously Lando on the short end of the stick much like his uh, corporate one time teammate Kyle Larson getting the short end of the stick with Danny Hamlin there in America so uh, yeah this is a, a interesting dynamic there uh, that's building up and we'll see how this develops, you know, over the next couple of races as we go into the summer break. But uh, at least we had a fairly interesting finish there in F1 for once. Yeah, fairly interesting finish and in, uh, podium only separated by four and a half seconds. Uh, in the end, it was uh, Russell over Piastri and signs Lewis Hamilton was fourth fish lips ends up fifth got the fastest lap two in the process um uh, so he really didn't get penalized at all um hulkenberg for Haas finished sixth sergio perez was nowhere the whole weekend uh, comes home in seventh splitting the Haas cars with magnuson in eighth then Daniel Ricardo for Toro Rosso, and then uh, Pierre Gasly in the Alpine finishes 10th. Uh, had a spirited battle with his teammate uh, Esteban Ocon, and uh, in the end was able to get 
hold him off. Uh, Charlie Claire had uh, issues on the initial start that also um, involved, I think, P. Astry and I believe Hamilton and um, had a front wing, had to get his re- front wing replaced. His team said that he had a chance to still make the points. He fell uh, six seconds, essentially, short of that. Um, Ocon, the last car in a lead lap. The newly um, uh, new contract, I mean, really, it's the joke, but Stroll, first car lap down. Uh, all but uh, Logan Sargent then were one lap down. Lando Norris was the only car that they didn't put him not classified. Uh, terrible uh, weekend for Aston Martin and for um, probably for Williams and uh, kick save um, Sauber, Ferrari, Ford, Audi um, there. So the points heading to the uh, British Grand Prix um, versus stop in is 44 as I can't do that quickly I'll go and uh, do this I'll go and get the calculator 81 points ahead of Lando Norris and then who Norris is a further six points ahead, so 87 ahead of Charlie Claire, and then um, over 100 points ahead of Carlos Sainz. So he's got uh, four race victories uh, gap over fourth place. So that's um, and three race races plus. So I think. That is outside of when he fell out of the race at uh, um, Australia. I think that fifth place is probably his worst finish of the year. So, I mean, when that's the case, it's going to be virtually impossible for anyone to beat him. Uh, Leclerc, 15 points ahead of Signs. Uh, Signs, 17 points ahead of. Sergio Perez, Oscar Piastri starting to catch him. George Russell moves up to seventh. Um, so there's they're only separated. Perez, Piastri, Russell separated by seven points. Um, 24 points separating Sainz and those three guys. Um, Lewis Hamilton in his own kind of zone in eighth. Fernando Alonso also that way. And then um, Yuki Sonoda, um in a mix with three other, with Stroll, Hulkenberg, and Ricardo, um, eight points separating those four drivers. And then you have the rest of the people. Of, um, both the Saubers have not scored points, and then Logan Sargent hasn't scored points either. Right now in the uh, Constructors' Championship, uh, it's 64 points. The gap between Red Bull and Ferrari, so that's uh, two and a half races. Um, McLaren is in third. They're uh, only, what is it, 23 points behind Ferrari, so that's interesting for second. Um, Mercedes is 72 points behind um uh, McLaren, so behind one of their customers, ahead of another one in Aston Martin, who's in their own place there, RB, and then Haas as a 10-point lead on Alpine, Williams as the two points, and then Kick Slobber uh, rounds out the tail there. Um, speaking of Formula... Uh, the formula racing at Austria last week. We'll get into Formula 2. Uh, formula 2 and Formula 3 here in a roundup. Uh, we'll start with Formula 2. The results um, at 
at Austria, Ali Bierman gets the victory in the sprint race, and Gabriel Bortoletto gets the victory in the feature. The sprint race, um, Ali Bierman over Pepe Marti and Paul Aaron uh, was your podium. Bortoletto fourth, Hauger fifth, Jack Crawford in sixth. Kushmini started on pole but fell back immediately. Dirksen, Zach O'Sullivan, and Victor Martins rounding out the top 10. Colapinto was 11th. Uh, I think I got uh, to Paul D. Etc., etc. And then in um, the. Feature race, Gabriel Bortoletto over Franco Colapinto and Isaac Hadjar. Enzo Fittipaldi, Paul Aaron rounding out the top five. Dirksen, Cordiel, Barnard, Zach O'Sullivan, Jack Crawford getting the last point. Standings heading to Silverstone. Um, and uh, they'll have their... That's got to be a misprint, right? Oh, no, that isn't a misprint. It is a month there. So um, Paul Aaron has an 11-point lead on Isaac Hadjar. Uh, Bordoletto with uh, a 30-point haul during this past weekend gets himself in the third. 10 points out of Zane Maloney, who, after his hot start to the season, has only scored 13 points in the last eight races combined. Um, Franco Colapinto in fifth. Jack Crawford, tough weekend. Um, after the great weekend he had at Barcelona, um, is in sixth. Cushmine's in eighth. Uh, Ollie Bierman uh, with his win... Uh, moves up to 14th in, in the sprint, uh, moves up to 14th in points, uh, two points behind Juan Manuel Correa, nine points behind Pepe Marti. So he's 20 points behind his teammate Andrea Kimi Antonelli, who hasn't scored in two straight race, like two straight weekends. And um, he's the favorite to take over Lewis's ride. In Formula 3, the the results at the and at in Austria, Nicholas Soloff gets the win in the sprint, and then Luke Browning in gets the feature race win. So the uh, sprint race was Nicholas Soloff or Soloff over Stenshore and Christian Mansell. Um, Don and Van Hoopen round out the top five. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to look through. Max Easterson was 18th. Um, trying to find Montoya. I guess he fell out of the race in the sprint. I haven't seen his name anywhere. Yeah, so he fell out of the race. Um, the feature race result, Browning over Gabrielli Mini, Daniel Boganovic, Mansell, and Gotha, Soloff, Lindblad, Van Hoopen, Forneroli, and Dunn. Uh, Sophia Flosch was close to actually getting a point, so that's something. Um, Max Easterson, 17th in the feature. Um yeah, so that's that. Going into British Grand Prix weekend, Luke Browning, after his feature race victory, takes a nine-point lead over Gabrielli Mini, uh, 20 over Luca Forneroli, um, 26 over Daniel Boganovic, 28 over Christian Mansell. I'm um, rounding a top five. Uh... There's really seven drivers that are in contention still uh, for the title. Uh, there's four uh, rounds, or at least four 
more rounds, um, eight total races left in the uh, season. So something to look at for those guys. Yeah, Sebastian Montoya uh, is currently 17th in points, hasn't scored since uh, Imola in May. So, okay. Um, MotoGP and Moto2, the Moto, I'll just go quickly for Moto2 uh, this uh, past weekend. Um, Iagura uh, beats Felipe Al Aldeguer, uh in the race. So that was yeah race. So Iagura, Felipe Aldeguer, Sergio Garcia, the podium. Jake Dixon, Chantra, Tar uh Ramirez, Lopez, and Gonzalez. Rounding at the top 10, no points for um, no points for where is did I miss him or was he out of the race? I didn't even take the start because there's no Joe Roberts there and it doesn't show him as not classified. So I don't know what happened. With uh, Joe Roberts, you'd expect him to be up front. Um, I guess it isn't as quick as I thought it would be. <laughs> um, Alex Marquez or Grassini, whatever. Um, trying to find. Trying to find uh, what happened to. In Moto Two, I don't understand where where Joe Roberts is or what happened. Chantra uh, Robertson after you know Pips and Magello pole. Uh, so I mean, yeah, fifty second. Uh, Start trying to, uh, yeah. Uh, sensational pace. Uh, I'm trying to go through. I'm trying to look for, because it doesn't say anything. They haven't even reported. They didn't write anything about Joe Roberts. So I am very confused. Um... Yeah, socks and rings are. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Joe Roberts at all. So I mean that is huge, huge points loss uh, for the weekend there. Um, going into the German Grand Prix, the standings for. Um, the standings for the yeah, my in okay, so that's lovely. Um, for Moto Two, so yeah, Joe Roberts after not racing, um, the MT Helmets MSI team are now round one and two in the points. Um, Garcia fourteen points out of Agura. Um, Roberts a further nine points behind that, so 24 points or 23 points behind in third. Uh, doesn't we'll see what happens. If he races at Soxen Ring, Lopez and Aldeguer rounding out the top five. Uh, Peco Bagnaya um, ended up. Uh, dominating at Assen the whole weekend, swept both the sprint and the race. Beats Jorge Marti or Jorge Mar Martin uh, and uh, Enea Bassaini, his teammate, 
Uh, so that was the podium. DG Antonio finishes fourth. Maverick Vinales fifth. Binder, Alex Marquez, Raul Fernandez, uh, Morbidelli, and Mark Marquez, who was penalized, ran out top ten. Um, yeah, so that was not classified. Uh, I finished the first lap. So the, um, that's the MotoGP, the standings heading to the Soxen ring. Uh, sees the, give me a second here, 10-point lead, Jorge Martin over Peco Bagnaya, and then a huge gap. Uh, Marquez is six points ahead of the guy he's going to replace next year at the Ducati team, Bassanini, um, Vinales, fifth, Pedro Acosta, uh, two points out of his future teammate, sixth and seventh, and then nine points out of Fabio Di Antonio, uh, S. Spargo, Ali Spargo, and Alex Marquez rounding out the top ten. Um, there are not many speaks here. Reveals uh, the Alex Marquez goes and um, signs for two more years uh, with Grassini. So, um, to stay with Ducati, and then uh, you have. I'm trying to look for the the riders and teams, and then that's not what I want. Moto highlight days running. I don't have all that rider market. So yeah, the rider market updated um, now. Oh. Uh, with um yeah prima print yeah so the Monday before Marco Basecki will be Jorge Martin's teammate uh then Prima Premac is gonna go to Yamaha um and you know peaceful so that's uh interesting uh so you look at that. I mean, right now, Jorge Martin, possible going over. He's going to Aprilia and might be world champion. Marco Basecki going from VR46 to a factory ride. Then Pedro Acosta going from the Tech 3 team over to the factory KTM. Um and they have Asaini going from Ducati to the Tech 3. Vinales going from Aprilia to, to Tech 3. So that's something. Um, you know, and Zarco is the only, and Luca Marini are the two riders for Honda. Um, they have two other seats there. And also, yeah, Fabio Quattraro doesn't have anybody yet as listed for his teammate. You have the um, VR46 Ducati team, the Pramac Yamahas, and Trackhouse with uh, their Aprilias um, without any riders announced as of yet. The Moto, yeah, I mentioned that, you know, Silverstone this week. Um, NHRA was at Norwalk, Ohio uh, for... The Summit Nationals, the Summit Racing Equipment Nationals, uh, Gage Herrera won, uh, of course. Um, Aaron Stanfield won in Pro Stock, Bob Tasca won in Funny Car, and Antron Brown won in uh, Top Fuel. Uh, Tony Stewart went out in the first round against uh, Jasmine Salinas. So even after the great race at Richmond the previous weekend, um, wasn't able to 
build on that at uh, Norwalk. Um, going to detailed results. Yeah, Antron Brown beats Doug Coletta in the final. He had a slight advantage in the in the reaction time, but uh, was able to hold him off. Even though, yeah, Doug Coletta ran a faster speed. The elapsed time was um, very tight, but Antron Brown gets the victory there. Ron uh, Bob Tasca beats Ron Caps, who smokes the tires at the hit. Um, Pro Stock. Uh, Aaron Stedfield beats Dallas Glenn, so elite over KB Titan. Dallas Glenn had problems on the line. Then uh, Gage Herrera beats Matt Smith uh, for another victory. Um, 11th consecutive victory. Um, so, yeah, that that's the pro stock motorcycle class is starting to get to the point where it's like what fish lips is doing. Um, the standings heading into a couple of weeks off for their next race, Doug Collette, 134 points out of Justin Ashley, 136 out of Sean Langdon. Antron Brown moves up to fourth, Steve Torrance in fifth, uh, Tony Stewart still, uh, in ninth. Um, Brittany Force missed the race this past weekend to be with her family at bedside for her dad, John Force. Um, 50 points ahead of Josh Hart for that um, last guaranteed playoff spot. In Funny Car, Austin Proc uh, was the only car that showed up for John Force racing this past weekend. Um, didn't have his best stuff, of course, but um, still maintains 178 point lead over Bob Tasca and 181 over Matt Hagen. John Force was leading the points a couple of races ago, now falls back to fourth. Um, J.R. Todd, a uh, uh, further seven points back of that. Ron Caps is in fifth or sixth. Uh, so we'll see the recovery for John and if he's ever able to get back beyond the wheel because they said that in the updates they were saying he has traumatic brain injury. So that could go either way. So we'll see what happens with the legend. Dallas Glenn still leads the points in pro stock over his teammate. Um, Greg Anderson, two um, of the elite, or four or five of the elite cars. I think even if you get to Christian Quadra, that's considered an uh, elite car. So from third all the way to eighth are um, elite connected uh, vehicles there. So... There is that. And then Gage her a huge lead over Matt Smith, uh, 30 points separating him and Richard Gadsden. Uh, John Hall and Andy Smith round out the top five. And then their schedule, their next race will be the Northwest Nationals at, uh, at Pacific Raceways and Kent, Washington. Uh, and then they'll race at Sonoma. So the two races that make up the Western Swing this year. And then, um, yeah, Formula E, I mentioned, and our prayers are with John Force and their family um, with the, uh, obviously, the long recovery ahead. Uh, for John, if he ever, you know, to try and, you know, get back to life, honestly. Um, in Formula E, we had the Portland E Prix, which was a double, double header. The in the Saturday round, 
Um, Antonio Felix da Costa gets a win over Robin Freins and John Eric Vern. Uh, in that race, it was, I'm trying to think of who it was, that um, Nick Cassidy ended up spinning out of the race while leading. So that was a huge, huge points loss and huge opportunity loss for a win there. So that's something that we have to see what happens with that um, in the race on Sunday. DaCosta repeats for the double. Uh, Robin Frines and Mitch Evans the podium over Verline, Vern, Muller, Natto, Gunther, Sebastian Buemi, Jake Dennis, um, defending world champion there. Jan Deruvula is 12th in the second race. Cassidy scored no points. So we will get into the standings um, heading into what is it? Uh, London E-Pre to end the season uh, with two races there heading into that weekend the standings show Nick Cassidy with a 12 point lead over his teammate Mitch Evans and buddy Mitch Evans uh, Mitch Evans getting a pole fastest lap in race one even if P8 and then P3 in the second race Pascal Verline tied also so Porsche versus Jaguar Antonio Felix da Costa is fourth. He's 21 points behind Verline and Evans. So. Very close battle, 12 points separating DaCosta, Roland, Vern, and Jake Dennis. And those are really the contending drivers there. Um, Jan Deruvula uh, is currently 20th in points. Um, but a very close by uh, with some of these other um, drivers there. So you had you know, Kyle Collette debut for Nissan, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, rally Poland. Or I mean, before I go, yeah, the um, Robbie Wickens was able to drive an open wheel car for the first time since his accident, um, which is really awesome. Um, and he seemed to enjoy it and get on the pace very quickly. So never know what might, uh, happen with that. Um, if it, if they're able to go far farther with that in general. But uh, I guess that's a question for another day. Um, next thing is Rally uh, Rally WRC uh, Newville on Sea Time or Proven Para. Uh, oh, Supers are Proven Para. Of course, I remember the tires. C7 depends, actions, controlling issues, on uh, mind. Uh, remarkable, don't you know, sport accelerating. Uh, OGA released from. Oh, yeah. A time rolls after being ruled out of the event and replaced by Cali Rovampera. Road traffic put out this weekend. And we're driving GR Recon collided with another vehicle. Those injuries we see as a serious injury. Um so he definitely had um accident, road traffic accident doing reconnaissance for Rally Poland, um had to withdraw and Cali Rovampera, the def two time defending world champion, uh was the sub 
and uh, went out and won the race. So Cali Rovampere, who's a part-time driver these days in uh, rallying, is still uh, got it. Uh, Cali Rovampere gets the victory over Toyota teammate Alfred Evans by 28.3 seconds. Adrian Formo gets another podium for Ford. Hyundai's with Terry Neuville um, finished fourth. So um, that's the um, that's rally there, World Rally Championship. Trying to see the points. Um, WRC dot. The points after Rally Poland uh, for the WRC. We're going to show that Terry Neville has a 15 point lead on Efren Evans and um, 21 uh, on Otanek. Um, OGA. Is only a point ahead of Adrian Formo. Cali Rovampera, who's only um, raced four times this year, um, currently sits sixth in points ahead of his teammate who's raced every race. And then uh, Mickelson, Sordo, Lappy, and um, Munster um, decide how they're going to go and deal with uh, circumstances. Um, yes, we got through all of that. Um, yeah, supercars will be at Townsville this coming weekend. Uh, super, yeah. Supercars in Townsville. The driver standings heading to that weekend. Uh, Will Brown, the points leader by 108 over his teammate Brock Feeney. Kaz Mostert in third, Percat and Golding rounding out the top five. Once you get past the top three, it's a very close uh, battle. It's 42 points between Percat in fourth and Will Davison in seventh. Anton Di Pasquale, Matthew Payne, Ricky Stanaway rounding out the top ten there in... Um, Supercars. And then Indy next uh, at Mid Ohio this coming weekend. Uh, right now, Louis Foster is a 35 point lead over Jacob Abel in the Drivers' Championship. And um, Kyle Collette uh, way back in third. Uh, Miles Rowe in a mix with um, Jamie Chadwick, Callum Hedge, Reese Gold uh, there. So that's eight points separating those four before we get to the next active driver, which is Salvador de Alba. So see what happens with Indy next. Okay, so yeah, British Grand Prix, Silverstone. Uh, one of the classic tracks, um, one of the tracks that was in the original um, World Championship uh, in 1950, so historic, uh, one very fast, very tough. Um, the fans, of course, very passionate, especially for Lewis, and then now that Lando and George are both contending, it could be one of the more ruckus, <laughs> crazy atmospheres we've seen um, in a long time there. Um, you started first last week, Josh, so I'll start uh, this week. F1 British, British Grand Prix. Uh, Phil goes, so Fish Lips to win. And then um, Fish Lips over Norris. 
and I'll, um, in an upset, I'll go and say Hamilton gets third, um, not Russell. Uh, what say you, Josh? Very British of you to go do that, but uh, I will go pick Lando Norris to win the British Grand Prix, Max Verstappen to finish second, and I'll say Woody going, finishing in third. Okay, so that's uh, so we go and deviate on that swap first and second, and we pick the either Mercedes teammates. So there you go with the British Grand Prix. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, big weekend though for all those British drivers going into Silverstone. Um, will be less fans there because the tickets are outrageous, but. We'll see how that all works out. The uh, Indy cars come back this uh, coming weekend at Mid Ohio, and the uh, hybrid formula begins um, as it. Uh, you know, with that, I mean, you have Ganassi who did a lot of the testing. You had, um, and along with Penske, so um, I would venture to say that uh, that would be a really in a, a massive advantage with a new with new technology. But uh, who knows? Um, right now, uh, Palo Alex Palo coming off of his win at Laguna Seca has a twenty three point lead on Will Power. And then um, 32 point lead on Scott Dixon in third. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of contenders, a lot of unknowns with the hybrid formula testing issues and the like. But um, do you expect, before we get into our picks, Josh, you expect the hybrid? to make a difference in terms of the overall racing product, at least this weekend um, at Mid-Ohio, or will it be more more or less what we've gotten used to with this car at this track um, with the push to pass? No, that's a good question. Uh, I'm going to say I don't think it really changes the overall product, but we might see some subtle differences in how overtakes are made. And maybe um, some maybe differences in how people defend their position uh, throughout. But I don't think it's going to be really too much different. Uh, I do wonder about the reliability and if there could be issues uh, there. Um, we see maybe a surprise engine failure or two and they make it a storyline you know, throughout the race. Or even not a surprise engine failure, but just like something where... Um, you know, something's clearly wrong and it costs, you know, a contender a, a valuable position or something like that. So that's kind of what I'm looking out for, I guess, there uh, and everything. And I, I feel like, you know, mid-Ohio is too technical of a track and the way it's set up to, uh, you know, really notice a difference. You know, maybe if they went to, you know, a different racetrack or different road course like Road America, you know, I feel like that'd be a better track to kind of display the hybrid engine there but you know we'll see uh what happens but you know i'm gonna go and pick alex polo uh to win the race continue his uh run here of course uh chip ganassi has had a lot of testing here so yeah i think uh they are with the hybrids so yeah i think alex wins the race um and then wild card uh, I guess I need to pull up the standings here uh, for IndyCar, but uh, uh, looking here at that, uh, wild, wild card. Uh, go with, well, with, uh, it's kind of low in the standings there, but I'll go with, uh, Mangrove Sean is a wild card. 
17th sitting there in 17th and standing. So I mean, build upon his finish possibly or potentially uh, Laguna Seca where he finished in, uh, good there. So we'll see. So Romain Grosjean, uh, the wild card choice for Josh there, um, along with Hello Plo. I'm wondering if he's actually going to be there since he's been doing the track and field. Um, hopefully he is. I mean, I know that Kevin Lee did a great job the last race, but never, it's never bad to have uh, Lee Diffie there. I'm actually looking forward to when he actually calls NASCAR races too uh, here later this year. So we'll see how that all transpires. I... You went with a Ganassi car. Makes me nauseous to go with a Penske car, um, even though I do like this guy. But um, I'm going to pick Scott McLaughlin uh, because, you know, the Penske having uh, so much testing time. Uh, Mid-Ohio and, and Barber, I think, are very similar Uh not, I mean, I guess elevation change wise, maybe it's a little bit less at mid Ohio, but I think there's a lot of um, similarities between those two tracks. So I'm going to go with Scotty as my um, pick to win. And then my wild card choice. Uh, is going to be my wild card choice is going to uh, be David Malukas. Um, David Malukas, I think, could be the wild card pick for either of us for a lot of the rest of the season, especially on the ovals. Um, and so, but David Malukas at Laguna Seca was running well. Probably didn't have as good of a finish as he he wanted, but he was there. So I'm gonna go McLaughlin to win and Malukas wild card. Um, yeah, let's move over then to Cup and Xfinity. At uh, Chicago, the street course, the second uh, race there, uh, the Loop 110. Um, the entry list pretty loaded, uh, 43 for 38. So there's going to be five uh, drivers going home. Um, you have... You have, in terms of non-regulars, you have, what is it, four, five, six, oh, six drivers that aren't scoring, or at least not for points, uh, six drivers, um, Ty Dillon, who drives trucks, um, but has experience there, Logano, who um, Joey Logano is going to be driving the AM Racing number 15, um, which has been driven by Haley Deegan, uh, but I guess they decided to um, have somebody else in there. Larson in uh, the 17, uh, Hendrick Cars 17, Keebler Gibbs, and John Hunter Nemechek for... Joe Gibbs Racing, and then Daniel Suarez for DGM uh, Racing, number 36. Uh, you have Sage Karam Racing for Sam Hunt. You have um, your Retzloff there, but you have Austin Green driving for Jordan Anderson. Brad Perez driving for uh, Joey Gase. D Burrito. Uh, for RSS there. Um, trying to see that. Yeah, Preston Partis in the 50. Nobody in the 53. Yeah, so Chandler Smith or 
Carson Quapel will be racing on the street course. That'll be a brand new experience for him. Um, SVG, Riley Herbst, and then LeBay and Andre Castro rounding out the um, top, the entry list there. So, um, I will pick first for the Xfinity. Xfinity at Chicago. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to do it, and I'm going to say Shane Van Gisbergen is going to win. Um, shocking absolutely nobody. Um, because, well, why not? Uh, my wild card selection, um, and it's, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll instead of going for the low hanging fruit there, I'm, I'm going to go with Austin Green because he did a good job, uh, both, both weekends, both at Snoroma and, um, or especially at Snoroma, he did well, and he was decent at Coda. Um, so I think uh, this racetrack will it'll go into the wheelhouse because they do a lot of street course racing in the Trans Am series. So I'm going to go and say that um, um, Austin Green is the my wild card for uh, this weekend's Xfinity race. Um, how about you, Josh? Uh, who are you looking at? Since you pick, I mean, SVG's the guy here. So, yeah, that's a pretty solid pick there uh, for Xfinity. But uh, I'm going to say that AJ Allmendinger wins uh, in the Xfinity series race here. Uh, in uh, Chicago, and my uh, wild card pick for this race, uh, I'm gonna pick Thomas uh, Anuziata. Yeah, Anuziata. I'm gonna pick him. So he's a, I think, yeah, he's a solid racer. They're racing for JD Motorsports this week. Yeah, he's a TA2 guy as well. Anunziata running there. I run some ARCA, a New Jersey guy, no less. Um, uh, so he's he's got a lot of talent, doesn't bring a whole lot of money to the table, but um, very talented race car driver. So Anunziata, um, a wild card for sure. And Anunziata, wild card, but. He's just like Austin Green, um, experienced in TA2 on these street courses. So, could be a very solid uh, wild card selection there. Last but not least is the Loop 121, the Cup Series, um, or Grand Park 165. I think I'm mixing it up with 120. I don't know why I'm did that but whatever it happens uh 40 cars for 40 spots um we'll get into the entry list so chastain driving a bush light peach car cindric and discount tire bioethanol for bald spot dylan josh berry driving overstock car um kyle larson with mo or valvoline Brad Keselowski, Elk Grove Village, Celsius for LaJoy, Zone for Kyle Busch, um, Napa Car for Clyde, Bass Pro Shops in Winchester for Jagson, Sport Clips for Denny Hamlin, Menards and Dutch Boy for Blaney, um, not even sure what that sponsor is for um, AJ, um, Mahindra Compact Tractors for Chase Briscoe. Um, Kaz Grala back in the 15. Um, Shane Van Gisbergen trying to go for two in a row. Um, driving a Wendy Saucy Nugs uh, Chevrolet. Christopher Busher Fastenal, Martin Truex Bass Pro. Uh, Chris Bell, 
craftsmen racing for a miracle. Um, Motocraft Quick Elaine Ford for Harrison Burton. Shell Penzoil for Joy Logano. Uh, you know, Dell Walsh Jr. with McDonald's. Uh, William Byron with Relay Payments. Circle for Hemrick. United Reynolds for Austin Hill. Uh, Chicago White Sox are going to be on McDowell's car, so interesting. Interested to see um, what the, the, that car, how it comes out. Generator, Gilliland, Haas Tooling for Priest, Dollar Tree for John Hunter, Ad Van Health for Eric Jones, Jordan Brand uh, for Tyler Reddick. Um, what is it? Mariano's and then Colgate Optic White for A. Richard on Baby Watch still. His wife expecting her first child. Um, Bowman Ally. Pinnacle Home Improvement for Justin Haley. Monster Energy for Keebler. RFK will be um, handing over the keys. One of their cup cars. Build Submarines on it. Derek Finley, the crew chief on that one. And then you have uh, Josh Balicki, and then um, you have Focus L for Zane Smith, Zeller Auto Group for Josevar, Jockey and Fold of Honor for Daniel Suarez. Um, so, yeah, Josh, you get the first dibs on uh, the Cup Series at uh, Chicago. Do we? Are you picking uh, SVG to repeat? Correct. I'm picking SVG to repeat. Uh, I think, I mean, even in a colleague car, you know, I think, well, uh, for colleague, I mean, it's, you know, going to be a well, well-driven race there. So yeah, Shane SVG going two in a row here at Chicago and my wild card pick, I'm going to pick Justin Haley because, uh, he's performed well overall, I think, you know, recently and, Hey, he finished second here in this race last year in a college car, so let's see if he can do it again in a Rick Ware racing car. That would be something if he were to do that um, or contend for a victory uh, there. I mean, he's had good pace at times recently, but in general, so. Um, I'm going to go and do the opposite. I'm going to go with A.J. Allmendinger. I picked him in my pick em pool, so... I'm going to triple down on it and uh, say that Almondinger in a um, in mild in a mild uh, upset because to be fair he's won more road course races than Xfinity anybody and then he's won in the Gen 5 what was it the Gen 4 the Gen 5 or it was a Gen yeah, or the Gen 5, the Gen 6, and now the Gen 7 car on uh, road courses. So I'll pick Almond Almondinger to win. And then my wild card selection for this weekend. I'm trying to figure out where the point slide to even go and make a delineation um that 20 points results uh the go over here and find yeah that's yeah cook out Grand park no, that's from last last year now. Um, darn. Uh, top series. Um, the yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go there. Yeah, so seventeenth. Um, yeah, so that's a top. So I had this thought initially and thought maybe he wasn't in the mix, but 
I am going to say Todd Gilliland as my wild card. Um, in part because front row has been showing pace and Gilliland has been way more consistent than Michael McDowell. Um, so, um, and he's, of course, staying for a multi-year deal. So probably wants to go out there and get that victory to prove everybody wrong and show that he's a capable race car driver. Um, yeah, it's time now for Josh's Sim segment. Uh, let us know, Josh, about your um, exploits on iRacing and anything else that's coming up uh, here in the next uh, week or so. Yeah, uh, latest exploits on iRacing. Um, yeah, this week, past week, I uh, did a, a lot of road racing with the Toyota GR86 series in Daytona, so ran ran that a, a ton. Uh, there was one point I figured out how to bump draft uh, in the GR86, so it's useful in the, some of the slower-paced cars. Uh, they do this in with the uh they do this with the um um uh, mx5 uh so yeah that's uh definitely um something tactic i've learned but uh was bump drafting one guy onto the back stretch and then did it a little too hard and uh break trying to break into the chicane and ended up taking out this guy and then spinning him out and everything and then later at the race he called me a dumbass and i was like okay yeah that's that's fine uh i didn't say anything back to him but you know i was like yeah that was my fault there it cost me some positions there too so yeah uh it's definitely a little too aggressive there with the bump drafts and that particular one but i uh, had an opportunity had an opportunity to win one and got passed on the last lap so you know wasn't able to cover the draft that the guy had behind me and then he was able to pass me at the line there so yeah ran uh as well in xfinity and cup for uh uh i racing at nashville uh didn't run too well there i thought i had a good run in first attempt in xfinity then sped on pit road so that got me uh that got me there and actually committed a lot of speeding on pit road this this uh, past weekend, um, and that's something I had to work on because I'm kind of used to the lower series where you're uh, automatically on pit speed, and they don't have the pit limiter and uh, series class B and above uh, for NASCAR. So I gotta kind of get used to that and not not do speeding on pit roads. So that kind of killed me there, but yeah, we'll. We'll figure it out and uh, go from there. Is continue to do oval stuff uh, this week. This week on iRacing, got uh, the NASCAR Legend Series at Michigan. Um, the '87 car is at Old Michigan 2009, so probably race that a lot. Um, of course, NASCAR uh, on the street circuit there, uh, Chicago. Um, got the IndyCar Oval Series, fixed oval series at um, Talladega, which that's wild, but that's Talladega. Um, got, uh, let's see what else, the fixed regular IndyCar at Mid Ohio. Um, got the, uh, let's see here, got the yeah, Xfinity at uh, Chicago here. So, yeah, it's mostly concerning NASCAR at, you know, Chicago mostly, so you know, got that there. Uh, let's see what else on the sports car side, sports car license. Um, got GT3 Ferrari GT3s at Okayama Circuit. Got uh, I Racing Ims uh, fixed series at the road course of Daytona. Uh, MX5 Circuit though de Navarra. Uh, there got. GR Butt Kicker Cup at Virginia International Raceway. Rainmasters at Okayama Circuit. Full course there. Um, got IndyCar. Yeah, IndyCar is a open wheel series, but I guess they have it listed as sports car. But that's at uh, Mid-Ohio there. Uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge 
at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Um, there, so yeah, looking there's definitely some good tracks here this week on the sports car side, um, and then of course on the Formula side, Formula V's at Summit Point Raceway, uh, rookie or Class D, Formula Fords at Circuit de Lidenon, uh, Formula Ford rookies at Summit Point Raceway Park, um, uh, let's see Formula C at Long Long Beach. So there, there's definitely lots of opportunity there on the uh, road course side. Formula 4 at Okayama Circuit as well. So Formula C at uh, Silverstone, which that's the Super Formula that's been really popular here on iRacing as of late in Super Formula uh, cars. Uh, so that's one to look out for as well uh, there. Uh, I think as far as news goes, let's see on iRacing this week and iRacing uh, detailed news. Uh, I think four. I'm trying to see if there's anything, anything of note here. I don't see anything uh, here. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, should be interesting with all the racing going on. Of course. Um, I probably need to download F1 at some point and try that. I've heard some things about it, but haven't tried anything yet uh, with I or with F1 on iRacing and or on um on console or on uh PC at all. So yeah, I need to go look there. But see on iRacing here, let's see uh anything on the iRacing Reddit that I can pick up on that's been of interest here uh don't see anything so yeah no real news but yeah definitely a lot of action of course on iRacing um so definitely uh be on that this week of course short week with holiday and everything uh so we'll see how much uh time i get but um i think i did I was trying to look because i know it's fourth of july and everything one of the traditions on uh, iRacing or i guess semi-traditions is the uh, firecracker 400 race that you know the parker kligerman and landon castle put on they put on last year uh they didn't do it in 22 they did in 21 and 20 but i uh, haven't seen anything about it this year so i don't know maybe even years they're not going to do it <laughs> maybe it's just going to be an odd years only thing i don't know but they haven't talked about it yet so not sure if they're doing it again this year but that was a cool event from a few years ago being able to compete in that and compete against pro drivers like bill jr and that but is uh they're not able to organize it of course i think parker's pretty busy with nbc and uh the xfinity series and i don't know what who knows what land castle is up to these days but um unfortunate but you know um that's okay i guess but yeah that's all i got for i racing and everything this week of course uh sim streams on a stream uh at twitch tv slash gcla2 go in there follow uh Twitter, uh, HAP Huffine, of course, our uh, show, everything uploaded on uh, YouTube, Accurate Show Podcast, so go on there, like and subscribe and everything, so yeah, that's, that's it for me this week, of course, uh, glad to be able to do it, and of course, uh, happy 4th of July, July 1st, got the fireworks here, fireworks in the background, I don't know if you'll be able to hear that, but definitely can hear that uh, outside, fireworks going on, so people ramping up the celebrations for july 4th as you know of course ricky stenhouse 1776 we are the champs so that's always a good quote legendary quote by ricky stenhouse there so um yeah that's that's uh good and you know hope everybody has safe uh fourth and you know try to stay away from all the crazies on the road i guess uh if you do go out yeah, definitely stay away from the crazies. Stay away from um, watch your your just your hands and legs and all that, and just your body in general around fireworks, so you don't turn into Jason Pierre Paul or somebody worse. Um, uh, and um, yeah, I mean that's that's it for us this week. We'll be back post july the 4th um 
to talk about everything that took place this weekend, all three major series on deck. Um, I'll be coming off of a couple of days of uh, bowling. No actual, my Thursday league, of course, isn't playing, but I'm playing in my other league uh, that I took off last week, and then my playing subbing and doubles. So we'll hopefully have some good news from there. Um, you can find me PG Matthew 28. You can find us at grip strip pod, both of those on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Philip G Matthew.com also and Philip G Matthew 28 on Insta. And, um, in you for Philip G Matthew.com with the show, uh, you can download it there. Of course you can download it on pod on Podbean and, Essentially, like I always say on on my other hits, anywhere if anywhere you get podcasts, you can basically get the Gripster podcast. And if it goes fast, we talk about it here on the Gripster podcast. So, um, and wouldn't want to do it without you at all times, Josh. I mean, always with great insights and in handling the video side and bringing the knowledge from the uh sim racing side um so with that we'll uh s- see you next week stay safe during this weekend eat, or this week eat plenty of hot dogs in uh ode to joey chestnut since he won't be at the hot dog eating contest and um yeah we'll see you next time on the grocery podcast <laughs>